and I am here to wrap up my May reading and tell you about what I'm going to be reading for June. So my May reading was very much about the Book 2 Prize. I, I did read three, complete three books for the Book 2 Prize in April, but um, I had a really large book to complete in May, which was The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. And so that was like the last 10 days of May. I was just reading that book as fast as I could. So I have made a, a whole dedic three dedicated videos to the book two prize books that I completed. Um, but just to um, put the record here, I finished Deacon King Kong by James McBride on audio, Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, and The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel in May for the book two prize reading. And because The Mirror and the Light was almost 900 pages, I didn't get to two of my books that I was supposed to be reading in um, May. And both of these were for book lists that I already that I have going on for 2021. So one of those is my 1970s project and that book was half read by Maria Campbell. So I have begun reading this one. I'm almost halfway now. And so this is just carrying over into my June reading. Um, this is a memoir uh, autobiography by Maria Campbell about her life growing up as a Métis woman in Canada, um, mostly in northern Saskatchewan so far. We're still in, very much in her childhood. And um, in case you're confused about terms, because I think a lot of people are half-breed in the 1970s when this was written, was um, a term a self-acknowledged term that some Métis people use to describe themselves and obviously this this word now would not be one that people would use but um, in the 1970s when this was written it was and this is the title of the book. The other book that I was supposed to be reading in May but is now carrying over into June is Homegoing by Yad Jassy. This is um, for my five star predictions from the African diaspora. And this is a dual timeline historical fiction beginning in the late 1700s, um, following two half sisters, one of which is sold into slavery and goes to America. The other is uh, stays in her village um, on the Gold Coast. And so uh, it is actually though a multi-generational novel you don't you know the, the two initial sisters are the ancestors through which the rest of the people come down but but it is um, each chapter represents a different generation of each family as they progress so um, also about halfway in that one already um, I also wanted to mention that in May I read uh, to the River by R Olivia Lang, and I did a dedicated video to that as well, and I will link all the videos that I've done about my reading in May down below, so that in case you wanted to hear more about it, you could go to that video. It talks way more in depth about the book. I really enjoyed it. It is a memoir nature writing essay, as Olivia Lang follows the Ouse River from its source all the way to the um, ocean and she walks this path in about a week and stays in inns and talks about the different towns she goes through, talks about the environment, talks about the way nature changes around the river. She also relays the story of Virginia Woolf's time spent in Sussex along this river and eventually her death where she drowns herself in the river. So um, it is, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very well executed and I plan to purchase it. I borrowed a library copy in order to reread it in future because I think there's a lot in there that um, I probably didn't even absorb um, completely. So I'm excited to go back to that in future and read it again and reference it again because I think the style and um, the imagery that Olivia Lang evoked uh, through the book were wonderful. So that was my reading for May, and I've shown you two of my reads for June. 
and now I will show you two others. So <clears throat> currently I'm reading Daybook, The Journal of an Artist by Anne Truitt. And um, I'm reading this as part of a group read with the Artist Mother Network. Um, that is a um, network of artists who happen to be mothers, but also um, female identifying artists. Um, and there's a podcast that goes with that. Um, and now they have their own kind of um, network, um, social media um, group. It's very similar to a Facebook style group. And that's the group in which we are reading Daybook. And I hope to have potentially some other video um, around this book as we read through it. It's told very much in a journal style. So what um, Anne Truett tried to do with this book was to crystallize her feelings around being an artist. She started writing it um, at a period in her career where she just had a curator go through her work to create a retrospective exhibition of her work for decades. And that threw her into a bit of a, um, a dark night of the soul in terms of herself and her own identity and how she saw herself in the world. And so she decided to write this book over the course of a year in order to um, crystallize those thoughts and kind of um, process all the things she that were brought up for her as her work was being um, brought out into the public, some of it for the first time, and shown in a really prominent way. And so um, I'm just through the first section, and I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot of wonderful um, observations about being a mother, being an artist, being um, processing your work, processing your feelings, your personal life around your work. So yeah, this is very good. And as part of my research for my own artistic practice, um, I am reading this month in June, Belonging, A Culture of Place by Bell Hooks. This is going to be my first Bell Hooks book. Bell Hooks is a very prominent um, writer and cultural critic. Um, she is a feminist writer. Um, she's a promoter of intersectionality with between races and cultures. Um, and she is apparently a very powerful writer. I've read many of her quotes, but never read a book by her. And this one is specifically about um, the ge geography of the heart. Um, so she focuses on issues of home place, of land and land stewardship, linking these issues to local, global environmentalism and sustainability. And I think she's writing primarily in this about Kentucky, which is where she grew up and the place that holds her heart. And so I'm reading this because a lot of the work coming up that I'm going to be creating is based on my own relationship with my home, both the home that I've chosen to live in with my family in British Columbia and the home where I grew up in Quebec. And so I'm reading a lot of uh, writers and artists who are reflecting on that sense of place and how that affects your being and um, the relationship that you develop with place. So yeah, very excited to get to this one. And the other book I am reading is my audio listen for the month of June, and that is The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. Uh, I have had this on my to-be-read list for several years now, ever since it uh, came out and got a lot of really great uh, reviews, as far as I remember. I think I do remember a few people not liking it, um, but um, I am liking it so far. So it is following two different timelines. Um, it's set in Chicago in 1985, uh, very much at the beginning or, or in-depth part of the AIDS crisis in the gay community, uh, following two, a couple, Yale and Charles. Um, Yale is a, he works for a university art gallery and he 
uh, acquires new works and tries to get funding to acquire new works for their permanent collection. So obviously that aspect, the artistic aspect of the book is also really great. I'm really enjoying that. And then um, the other timeline is 2015 in Paris. And um, it is related to um, a friend of Yale's sister, Fiona, who was part of their group and her getting to Paris to try to look for her daughter. And so that that section of the book, I haven't read as many um, chapters in yet. Uh, I really think that so far she set up the book really well. You don't have, I didn't find any confusion between jumping from the timelines. It's very clear who's who, when you get where in the book, and I love that, so. Uh, and I'm, of course, also still plugging along on A Moment's Liberty, Virginia Woolf's Shorter Diary uh, excerpts. I just, like I said, you know, re I'm reading these a few pages um, a month. I might try to get through the 1919 section uh, this month, or maybe even more. We'll see. So um, I did not sign up for Book Tea Prize for the next round, so um, I will leave links to all the different videos that I talked about down below and uh, I know there are lots of readathons, caribathon, and it's pride month and a lot of different um, things going on in June again but I decided to just really go under the radar with reading in June and um, I did that mostly because of the like extreme amount of reading I did in May to complete uh, the mirror and the light and I'm going to just be really low-key with my reading in June and uh, get some artwork done. So thanks so much for watching. I will be back again soon with another video and I hope you have a great day.